The sound and spirit artist link extra. Rick Elias, The Jesus Record. Well, The Jesus Record um, has really done for me in, in my life what I think Rich intended for it to do, which was force me, by virtue of the fact that I'm so involved in it, um, to meditate more on Christ and to consider Christ more as the center of my life. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Nothing is beyond you. You stand beyond the reach of our vain imaginations. Our misguided piety. The heavens stretch to hold you. And deep cries out to deep, saying that nothing is beyond you. Nothing is beyond you. That where I am. Hi, this is Mark Ryder, and you're listening to the Sound and Spirit Artist Link Extra, featuring an in-depth look into the lives and music of today's top contemporary Christian artist. Our special guest is Rick Elias of the project called The Jesus Record, Songs by Rich Mullins. Now, Rick, this album is really extraordinary. It's amazing the way it came out. Tell us about The Jesus Record and what the mission of this album is. Um, the... Jesus record, the biggest misconception about it when we were making it was that it was a tribute record to Rich, and it, it isn't, and it never was. It's a record about Jesus as Rich had intended it for us and for himself and for the listener, and we stayed true to that in the making of it. And so what we're really hoping is that it draws people closer to Christ, and uh, as a little sidebar, um, a lot of people are coming to know Rich's music posthumously through this record, and it's been um, really, really touching to see. Yeah, yeah, I believe that. You know, I was just thinking about the fact that uh, you had been so involved in this project. What impact has this recording had on your life, Rick? Well, the Jesus record um, has really done for me in, in my life what I think Rich intended for it to do, which was force me by virtue of the fact that I'm so involved in it, um, to meditate more on Christ and to consider Christ more as the center of my life as opposed to just a peripheral um, or an ancillary function of who I am. And it's really begun to, to show some fruit because I think as you get on in, the, in your faith, you know, a few years down the road, there's a tendency to become very complacent. And that's something Rich never was. And um, it's really had a focusing impact in my life. You know, a lot of people don't know the story of how the Ragamuffins began. Tell us about that. Well, the Ragamuffins began, um, actually, we had all read uh, the Ragamuffin Gospel by Brennan Manning individually. And each of us had come to know Rich uh, you know, Jimmy and Rich knew each other, and I knew Rich from a trip to Guatemala with Compassion International back in 1990, I think it was. So we were friends first, and we were all impacted by that book. And I think Rich even possibly more so than 
any of us, uh, in, at least in, to the extent that uh, it made him want to expound on those um, philosophies a bit, in a bit more of a broad fashion. And uh, he wanted to form a band called the Ragamuffins. And Jimmy and I were asked to join, and Mark and Aaron joined about a year later. And we sort of became a band in spite of ourselves at his insistence. Uh, and uh, it's really been a blessing. We're, and we're going to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and listen to the first single, My Deliverer. Is there anything you want to share with us about this song? My Deliverer is uh, probably my favorite song on the record. Um, it was the one that when Rich played it for me a weekend, no, a week before he died, uh, we had gone up to Window Rock to uh, talk about the making of the record with him, and he played some of the songs, and I hadn't heard my deliverer yet. And I remember writing down on this pad of paper I had about each song. I was making notes about each song, and I, I just wrote down, you know, don't, if you mess up the whole record, don't mess up this song. And uh, it, it was just classic rich. It's uh, a song that really, you know, only a writer, I think, of his caliber could really pull off where you, you start in the historical context and uh, move it into the first person, even to not only the declaration of my deliverer is coming, but also on a very confessional note with, I will never doubt his promise, though I doubt my heart, I doubt my eyes. That's a, an uncanny ability to be able to switch perspective like that and uh, effortlessly and take the listener with you. And uh, I, I think that's what struck me about the song. And I think that possibly it's what you know, um, really resonates in the hearts of the listeners. You're listening to the Sound and Spirit Artist Link Extra. Our special guest is Rick Elias. Rick, Rich Mullins talked a lot about God's grace and the futility of life without Jesus. We have a sort of a piece of an interview here that was taped recently. Let's listen to what he had to say. It would be hard to say anything about grace because anything you'd say would be less than grace. You know, it's grace is a is a is a big thing. I think that one reason a lot of people don't don't experience grace is because they they don't have any idea that they they need it and I, I think it, it's you know a while ago I was kind of hacked off and I was you know kind of going God why am I such a freak I mean why couldn't I have been a good basketball player I wanted to be a jock or something you know and instead I'm a musician I feel like such a sissy all the time and why couldn't I just be like a regular guy 
And then I, I you know, the more I thought about it, um, the more I realized that, that, you know, sometimes God has things in mind for us that, that we can't even imagine. And I think when maybe it was good for me to grow up being picked on a little bit because then, then I realized what it meant to be kind of the underdog and then to have someone who is not an underdog, someone who's, you know, like God or something, to say, hey, I want you to, to be with me. Then you kind of go, wow. And so maybe, maybe for that reason, grace is more important to me than people who've been able to be more self-sufficient and, and all that sort of thing. In addition to the ragamuffin, several of the songs on the album feature guest artists. How did you guys decide who to invite to record these songs? We decided who to uh, have as guests on the record. Um, essentially, our, our criteria was that they should have some connection to Rich. And they, beyond that, that first step, then they, they really needed, I needed to be able to hear them in the context of the record. I, they needed to fit the, the fabric of the record, as it were. I needed to be able to envision them singing a particular song or a part or whatever and so that list became very very short and that's why we included uh, Amy and Michael W. Smith and Ashley and Phil Keggy and I should note that they were all extraordinarily generous with their time and uh, and did a wonderful job with the songs I mean we, I couldn't have asked for more from each of them they were very very kind and and uh, gracious about this and wanted to be a part of it from the beginning made time in their very busy schedules to to be a part of it. So that it was really a that was really a, a wonderful thing to be able to work with each of them. Let's listen to a song from the Jesus record featuring Amy Grant. Here's Nothing Is Beyond You. You're listening to the Sound and Spirit Artist Link Extra. Our special guest is Rick Elias, talking about the project The Jesus Record. Even though the demos that Rich left were raw, there was power in those songs. I don't know if it was something within him or just the passion that he had for Christ. Rick, talk to us about the relentless search that you saw in Rich's thirst for truth and how that has affected all of you. Well, the thing about Rich is that struck me the most was that he was a very complex person had a very simple faith and that was inspiring to me because most people I most of the people I know are very complex uh, people uh, they're most of them are pretty smart and driven and resourceful and um, unfortunately a lot of times we we can use that complexity 
as an excuse to uh, avoid dealing with certain issues in our life with regard to the faith, which are pretty cut and dry. And Rich never cut himself that kind of slack. He was, he was relentless in his pursuit of God, but he always counted completely and utterly on God's mercy and grace. He truly believed that we are saved by grace, not works. And uh, on the same token, on the other, on the other side of, flip side of the coin, he was an Indiana farm boy, and at the end of the day, he didn't have a whole lot of time for pie-in-the-sky theology that had no earthly good. So he really invested his life very uh, wisely um, in some very practical matters, from Compassion International to the um, reservation uh, music education program that he had up in Window Rock. So that was really inspiring to see. And uh, it has encouraged me to be a little bit less precious with my view of my faith and a little bit tougher on myself at times about how I apply it in the real world. We're about to hear another song from the Jesus Record. This one has Rich Mullins leading the way on the intro of the song. It's called, That's Where I Am, There You. You're listening to the Sound and Spirit Artist Link Extra. Our special guest is Rick Elias from the project The Jesus Record, Songs by Rich Mullins, performed by various artists. Rick, tell us what it's been like for you guys on the road touring this album. Touring this album has been wonderful. People, the attendance has been very, very good. Um, people have been wonderful, uh, very generous, and very kind. Um, because we honestly didn't know how people would received the record um, and didn't much care to be honest about it we knew why we were making it and so to have the opportunity now that the record has been as successful as it's been and we're thrilled about that for the sake of Rich's foundation if nothing else um, and to be able to go out and see his fans and and um, sort of assist i guess in a in a, how do I, how do i put this in the most joyous and celebratory sense of the word what this has become in some ways is a, a traveling memorial service and i know how morbid that can sound but it's actually a wonderful thing it's a very emotional event it's the audience's night it's not about us it's really about them and their and god 
and them honoring and us honoring uh, Rich Mullins and his legacy, and not only his musical legacy, but his, his, the legacy of his life and what he dedicated his life to. So it's been a wonderful thing to be able to be a part of that. Yeah, that's right, it is. And we appreciate what you guys are doing on the road. Um, what would you say is your purpose and ministry in continuing on as the Ragamuffins? Well, I'm, the point of going on from the beginning has been to not only preserve Rich's musical legacy, but to also continue uh, the legacy of his life. And we knew what good was going to come from the record just on a financial level for his foundation that, that would help the things that he had invested his life in um, so freely um, and so, you know, in such a giving way, it would help those things to continue. And uh, he was just way too important of an artist, uh, in my opinion, uh, to just assume that it could, you know, that that flame could be extinguished simply by leaving this mortal plane. I, I don't believe that. Uh, I don't think you can extinguish what a person believes that strongly and uh, that quickly. And uh, we, we are thrilled to be a part of continuing that. And uh, mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah. I've read that this next song written and performed by uh, Ragamuffin Mark Robertson really defined the Jesus that Rich Mullen loved so much. What can you tell us about this song, Rick? Oh, yeah, God is surely with us. Um, Mark could probably tell the story better than I could. But I, I do know that at one point when uh, it mentions, um, see, I don't sing it, so it's hard for me to say what those lyrics are. Something about, about Jesus hanging out with the drunkards and the thieves and the whores or something like that. And, and Rich at first thought, he said, wow, you know, you know, I, I don't know if you should change it or not, but I know it'll never get played on radio. <laughs> and uh, and they just sort of left it at that. And so Mark, you know, thought about it, and he went, well, you know, maybe I can change the line a little bit, whatever. And uh, Rich wouldn't let him do it because he said that was who Jesus was, and that's what he did, and that's what this record should be about. And... Uh, it, it's a wonderful song, and, and it's, it's, it's one of the mainstays of our set live. You're listening to the Sound and Spirit Artist Link Extra, and our special guest is Rick Elias. Rick, it seems like there's a deeper message that Rich and the Ragamuffins are trying to communicate with this album. 
Can, will you talk about that a little bit for us? Well, if we're trying to communicate anything with this record, is it's simply our deep and abiding love for our Lord and our sorrow um, for losing our friend, but also our joy for the fact that he's home. And uh, I think we just wanted to stay true to what Rich wanted to communicate with the album, which was that we should all make more of an attempt, I guess, to um, truly consider Christ at the center of our lives. And uh, I know that we're doing that individually, and if that causes... If that has an effect on the listener, then then uh, we're thrilled. That's good. That's very good. Let's listen to Michael W. Smith joining the Ragamuffins in the last song we'll hear on the show. It's called Heaven in His Eyes. Here it is. We want to thank Rick Elias for being our special guest on this special Sound and Spirit Artist Link Extra, featuring the songs of Rich Mullins, produced by various popular Christian artists, and of course, Rick Elias on the project also. Thanks a lot, Rick. This is Mark Ryder. Thanks for listening to the Sound and Spirit Artist Link Extra.